Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, one number 194, we'll take a look at a term or buzzword that seems to be appearing in our industry called architecture as code and what that could possibly even mean. <laughs> you can get a listing of all the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday on my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. When we think about architecture, we think about architectural styles, maybe architecture patterns. However, one of the new buzzwords that's come out is architecture as code. And when my friend and co-author, Neil Ford, and I first heard this, we kind of dismissed it. Well, that's kind of ridiculous. What does this even mean? But we started to reflect a little more on what this term could possibly mean. And we came up with at least one possible definition to define architecture as code. And the definition we came up with was really being able to describe our architecture through executable code. And let me show you what I mean. So back in lesson 177, I talked about logical architectural components, uh, those building blocks of a system or a product, and that they are represented generally through a directory structure or a namespace. Uh, if you haven't seen lesson 177, uh, I would suggest that you pause and maybe watch that first or watch this video, but then watch that one as well to get kind of a more concrete example of what I'm about to show you. So to describe architecture as code and to give you some examples of what this possibly could mean, at least our definition, <laughs> I'm going to defer to the example that I used in the past three videos I've done about identifying architectural components. And that is the SysOp squad. This is a trouble ticket system that customers can enter in a trouble ticket and the customer facing experts go to your home or office and fix your problem. Well, in those three lessons, we basically constructed this logical architecture as you can see here, how the system actually works, how it's constructed. Uh, notice that we've got three domains here. Uh, let me just get my drawing tool here. A, uh, a survey domain, which includes components, sender and receiver. A customer domain, which contains components so that customers can register and manage their profile. And finally, a ticketing domain, where tickets are created and then assigned, routed, to the expert in the field. Uh, we notify the customer that the expert's on their way, and then the experts notice then complete a ticket. When completing a ticket, then it's sent, uh, the customer is sent a survey. And that's the logical architecture that we created. When we talk about this term architecture as code, let me show you one possible definition for that. And to do that, I'm going to show you a couple of tools that we can actually use. And the first couple here are, are free. Um, the first is ArcUnit and the Java ecosystem. Uh, ArcUnit allows in Java to be able to, as we'll see, uh, represent our architecture as executable code. Uh, in the .NET platform, uh, we have two available, ArcUnit Net and also NetArcTest. Uh, in Python, uh, we have PyTestArc, not to be confused with PyArcTest. <laughs> and finally, it, not finally, but also for JavaScript, uh, TSArc. Now, these are all uh, free tools that we could just simply use. Uh, one that's not free is SonarGraph Architect, which does the same thing I'm about to show you. Uh, let's go back to our logical architecture. Now, we typically draw lines in boxes like this, but how can I represent this architecture through code? Let me show you an example, and I'm just going to take an example using ArcUnit. The first thing I can do is describe the various domains that we have. We know we have a survey domain, customer, and ticketing domain. We can see that in the diagram, but I can represent that architecture as executable code by actually using this method right here, define domains. Classes .should reside in a package ticket, customer, or survey. 
And what that means is that all of the code and components and directories, for example, for ticket would be in this domain. Customers here and surveys here. So not only does this describe my architecture as executable code, but it also governs that architecture to make sure that the structure of our code, the implementation, matches that intended architecture. And one of the things I can also do is take that ticketing domain, and what we'll do is we'll blow that up to see that we have five components and how they interact. Uh, we can also describe our components as code as well. And using ArcUnit again in Java, I could define my ticket domain components as follows. Classes that should reside in a package. Sysops.ticket.creation, assignment, routing, notification, and completion. So that as this executes, if a developer created any additional component that doesn't exist in my architecture, this would find it. But it also describes my architecture. I've got five main components. Creation, which is right here, assignment, routing, notification, and finally, ticket completion. So this is how we are kind of interpreting architecture as code, to be able to represent our architecture through executable source code. Well, there's a couple of other examples I want to show you, and that is still representing architecture as code, albeit not quite executable. We could leverage tools like Archimate, for example, in the op uh, from the Open Group, or even Structurizer with the C4 model. And by utilizing these kind of tools, I can actually export that model as code. Albeit this is not Java code or C Sharp or Python code, it happens to be basically XML, but we could still represent our architecture. So notice here, this application component, ticket creation, is right there. I've got another application component, ticket assignment, ticket routing, and so on and so forth, all the way down. How they relate, uh, the user interactions with those. Now this is not executable code. However, I could leverage this code as a prompt for an LLM like, for example, ChatGPT, which I, actually I have, to have it actually learn about my architecture. Again, another good representation of this buzzword architecture as code, being able to describe my architecture using code. Well, <clears throat> Neil and I came up with a third example of architecture as code, and that is through automated fitness functions that end up governing our architecture. These fitness functions, whether they're triggered or continuous, measure things like scalability, availability, responsiveness, fault tolerance, other characteristics and also capabilities that describe my specific architecture. And what these fitness functions do is measure these kind of operational characteristics and the levels that I need to be at, or I should say the architecture needs to be at, which further kind of defines and describes our architectural capabilities through code. So these are three examples that uh, I could offer you up for this buzzword, architecture as code, and what it could possibly mean. Uh, there's a lot of benefit and also a lot of power in doing this, to be able to describe my architecture other than representing it in a diagram, but rather executable code, modeling code that I could actually feed into an LLM, and also all of those various fitness functions which are written in code that describe my scalability needs or responsiveness needs. Well, <clears throat> there's one definition. Um, anyways, thank you so much for listening and stay tuned in two weeks for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.